This is four days of a completely soy-free meal prep and every single day contains 2,000 calories, 120 grams of protein, and hits all of your nutritional needs without supplements or protein powder. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make it. You can download all of these recipes like our pumpkin pie smoothie or our almond butter energy bites by clicking the first link in the description. I really wanna make it clear that soy is not bad for you. In fact, there are very few people who have a legitimate reason for avoiding soy. To learn whether or not you should avoid soy, check out our science-based soy video by clicking the link in the description. With that being said, let's dive in. So I don't know about you, but when it comes to meal prepping, I wanna do things really quickly and efficiently. I wanna spend my whole day in the kitchen, and that's why I always start with the things that are gonna take the longest to cook. In this case, we're starting with some coconut rice. I absolutely love using a rice cooker. You can cook this on the stove as well, but using a rice cooker, you can just throw it all in, leave it off to the side, and it will cook it all perfectly without your attention. Without your attention. <laughs> To your rice cooker, add one and a half cups of jasmine brown rice, along with one whole 14 ounce can of light coconut milk and one and a half cups of water. Turn it on and let it cook while we work on prepping other things. So next, we're gonna start cooking our dinner, which is a hearty lentil soup. We got tons of nutritious veggies. The lentils are also packed with protein, B vitamins, potassium, and fiber. And this is just a really great wholesome meal. It takes about an hour to cook, so we're gonna get this started now, and then we can start prepping our other meals. Dice up two onions and add to a large pot on the stove with two tablespoons of minced garlic and a splash of veggie broth. Turn the heat onto medium and saute for a few minutes. Next, slice up four carrots and add to the pot along with your spices. One tablespoon turmeric, one tablespoon of cumin, and any other spices of preference. Cook for about five minutes or until the carrots and onions have softened a bit. Add 12 ounces of rinsed green or brown lentils with four cups of vegetable broth and four cups of water. So one mineral that you really do not want to overlook is iodine. Iodine is crucial for your thyroid health. All seaweed is a really great source of iodine. This half teaspoon of kombu has about 500% of your daily iodine needs, and that's why we're going to be adding it in this meal prep. Mix to combine and raise the heat until everything is boiling. Reduce to medium-low heat, cover, and simmer for about 45 to 55 minutes or until lentils are tender. Every 10 to 15 minutes or so, mix it up, taste it, and add any additional salt, pepper, or other spices. Once the lentils are tender, add in four cups of washed and roughly chopped kale along with the juice from half a lemon and black pepper to taste. Cook for another five minutes, stirring the kale in. Remove from heat and let it cool for a bit before portioning it out. When you're ready to eat this meal every day, top it with two tablespoons of nutritional yeast and also some chopped parsley for some nice garnish and also added nutrition. I really love this soup because it is so easy to freeze, which means that it can just stay even more fresh if you would like to keep it in the freezer. And then you're not worrying about having some uh, questionable or a little bit more stale, stale is that even the right word? I don't know. A little bit more stale meal preps uh, on day three and four. Hey, it was too lengthy? Yeah, it was too lengthy. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. Me too. <laughs> I'm terrible. Let's go again. <laughs> So next we're gonna be making a delicious sweet chili seitan that's gonna go with our coconut rice. Seitan is a fantastic source of soy-free protein, clocking in at 25 to 30 grams of protein in just a 100 gram serving. Break apart the seitan with your fingers and add it to a mixing bowl. Then slice four bell peppers and add them to the bowl along with half a cup of sweet chili sauce. Then toss everything to coat. Add this mixture to a pan and saute over medium heat for five to 10 minutes until the seitan starts to get a nice golden brown color. Once the rice is done, evenly divide the cooked coconut rice between each of your four meal prep containers. Then evenly divide the seitan and bell pepper mixture between your four containers as well. Roughly chop about four cups of kale or whatever you have left over from the lentil soup. So you have three options to incorporate the kale. The first is you can just leave it off on the side. That's gonna keep it super fresh. You can put it in the fridge and then every single day when you're eating this meal, you can just take off one cup and then add it to your dish. The second way that you can use the kale is by adding it to the bell pepper and seitan mixture at the very end of the cooking process to allow it to wilt a little bit. And the third way that you can use this kale is by actually just throwing it in with the lentil soup. When you're ready to eat this meal, add half a cup of frozen mango, which is about 75 grams. 
This adds a really nice, sweet, contrasting flavor to this dish. It tastes absolutely amazing, but we wanna leave the mango as fresh as possible, which is why we're gonna keep it frozen. So for breakfast, we're gonna be making pumpkin pie smoothies. We're gonna prepare all the ingredients and then freeze them so they're ready to just throw into a blender and blend up into our breakfast in just two minutes. Line up four containers and add a sliced banana to each. Then drain and rinse a can of white beans and add one third of a cup to each container with the bananas. So I know it might seem weird to add white beans to a smoothie, but it adds a really nice creamy texture and you actually don't even taste that there are beans in here. Plus you're adding a ton of protein, fiber, iron, and a lot more nutrients. So I'm using glass containers, but just keep in mind that if you do the same, your ingredients might stick a little bit. You can just put a little bit of wax paper on the bottom, or you can just go ahead and use something like freezer bags. Bags. Now put these in the freezer. Next, grab a mixing bowl and add the following ingredients. One and a quarter cups of pumpkin puree, a quarter cup of almond butter, three quarters of a cup of hemp hearts, one heaping tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice, one heaping tablespoon of cinnamon, and one tablespoon of maple syrup. Mix everything together until well combined and scoop into large ice cube trays and freeze. So as you can see, I decided to put this mixture into ice cube trays, but you're welcome to just go ahead and put it into the same container as the bananas and the beans. Once these are frozen and you're ready to have your smoothie, add one smoothie container to your blender along with a fourth of the pumpkin pie ice cubes and one and a quarter cup of ripple milk plus more is needed to thin. Blend it up and top with some extra cinnamon or pumpkin spice if you'd like. One other thing to know about the smoothie is it's not that sweet, so if you want it to be a little bit sweeter, you can use sweetened milk instead of unsweetened like we use, or you can also just add a little bit more maple syrup. For our snack, we're gonna be making almond butter energy bites, which is a really easy, no-cook snack that is packed with iron and 13 grams of plant protein per serving. First, we're gonna add all of our ingredients to a mixing bowl. One cup of rolled oats, half a cup of almond butter, a quarter cup of hemp seeds, three tablespoons of maple syrup, three tablespoons of vegan chocolate chips, and one pinch of salt. Use a spoon to fold everything together until it has the texture of cookie dough. You should be able to make about 12 energy bites in total. These are actually really good as a frozen treat, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and put them in my freezer. That's it for all of our meals. Let's dive into a nutrition breakdown. So here's our nutrition breakdown. We clocked in at 2,021 calories and 120.5 grams of plant protein. All of our amino acid targets look great. We're gonna be able to build plenty of lean muscle on this meal plan or shred body fat without worrying about losing lean muscle in the process. So when it comes to our protein sources, our main protein sources were the seitan and lentils. Both of those combined clocked in around 60 grams of plant protein. But as we know, all plants contain protein. So as I scroll through this list of ingredients, we can see that really all of them are contributing to that protein target. This meal prep contains about 46 grams of fiber, which exceeds the daily recommended intake of 25 to 38 grams. Many people overlook fiber, but it's actually one of the most important things to focus on when it comes to improving your health. Not only does fiber help you to feel full and satiated throughout the day, but it's also been linked to reduce risk of heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. Besides vitamin B12, vitamin D is the only nutrient that you need to get from fortified foods or supplements. But there's a reason vitamin D is known as a sunshine vitamin, and that's because you can also get it from sun exposure. That's how all mammals get vitamin D. So a general recommendation is that you should aim to get about 15 to 30 minutes of sun exposure on your arms and legs per day, 15 minutes for people with lighter skin and 30 minutes for people with darker skin. But if you're watching this in an area where it's cold or you don't get adequate amounts of sun exposure, then supplementation is the way to go. We got plenty of iron on this meal prep. In fact, the lentils on their own contributed 77% of our recommended daily intake. And one of the best ways to boost your iron absorption is pairing high iron foods with foods that are high in vitamin C. The kale and lemon juice in the lentil soup is a good example of this. Typically, soy products like tofu and soy milk are where we get a lot of our daily calcium. But we can easily hit our calcium target by making sure to use a high calcium plant-based milk like the ripple milk that we use in the pumpkin pie protein smoothie, including dark leafy greens in our diet like kale, and also using almond butter instead of peanut butter. And if you're curious about the software I'm using, it's Chronometer. 
All right, so that's it for this video. Again, you can download all these recipes plus a full grocery list and a nutrition breakdown by clicking the first link in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have not yet subscribed, please be sure you do that so you don't miss our future videos. Also, I would really love to hear in the comments what are the kind of meal preps you would like to see. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.